and read this lovely message again that everyone knows and loves so well. The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmayo at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. Okay, and we've got excuse me, the recording going. And so now, let's see here. Suppose I asked you to write the number 403. So if you're taking notes on your paper right now, write the number 403, okay? Do it, come on, do it, do it, do it. All right, so, did any of you write this? Anybody? Or did you write this? Anybody write that? Why not? 403 ones, 403? Anything wrong with those? No one's willing to participate. Oh, come on, surely somebody. No, are you even still there? Maybe you've all left. I, I see Jamie there, but maybe everybody else has disappeared. Well, this isn't 403, this is like 43, isn't it? And if we look at that, that's kind of confusing. It's like, well, what do you mean four, three? 403, we write like this, right? We put a four and then a zero and then a three. What does the zero represent? It's called a place holder. Now, I didn't say I want the number 400s, 0, 10s, and 3 ones. But when I say 403, we know from experience that we have to put a 0, 10s in there. Otherwise, we get this, which is confusing, or this, which we think is 43. So we need a placeholder for each column. Okay? What does that have to do with anything? Well, all right. Let's say we've got this problem. A squared minus 25, the quantity, divided by A plus five, okay? So using polynomial division, we would put what? A plus five outside and A squared minus 25 inside like that. That's what we've been doing up till now. So it seems reasonable to continue doing the same thing, right? Okay. So then we're gonna divide the leading term inside by the leading term outside and we get A squared divided by A, which is A. Hmm. Where am I gonna put that A? I don't really have a column that's, oh, let's just put it up there. Let's put it just wherever, let's put it up there, okay? A. So now I'm gonna take that A times the divisor outside A plus five, and I'm gonna get A squared plus five A, and I'm gonna write that A squared plus five A, okay? And I'm gonna subtract that quantity from what's up above, and then distributing, I'm gonna change it to addition of the opposite, and I'm gonna get A squared plus negative A squared, and then negative 25 plus negative five A. What's wrong right there? Those aren't like terms. They don't really belong in the same column, do they? The minus 25 is a constant term and the minus 5a is a variable term. So things are messy. So let's do this. Let's start over. Let's see, what was it? Only this time, let's put in the missing term. Now, what did I put in there? Plus zero A. I didn't change the value of A squared minus 25, but I created a column to put A to the first power into. So going from left to right, I've got what? A to the second power, A to the first power, no A at all, okay? So I created a column because there was a missing power. 
All right. Now let's see how things work out. So I'm going to take the leading term inside divided by the leading term outside, a squared divided by a, which is a. That's going to go right up there in that a to the first degree power. Okay. Then I'm going to take a times a plus five, which is a squared plus 5a, a squared plus 5a. Subtract that quantity from what's up above. Change it to addition of the opposite. a squared plus negative a squared is no a squared at all. 0a plus negative 5a is negative 5a. Bring down the next term, minus 25. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside. Negative 5a divided by a is negative 5 or minus 5 now. Then I take the minus 5 or the negative 5 times a plus 5, and I get negative 5a minus 25. Write that up here, negative 5a minus 25. Subtract that quantity from what's up above. Change it to addition of the opposite, and I get 0. So the answer is a minus 5. Let's check our work. Let's take a minus 5 times the divisor, a plus 5. We get a squared plus 5a minus 5a minus 25. Oh, that's that conjugate pair, isn't it? And it checks. So the whole point of that was we put in a missing power so that we had each power from the highest one down to the constant represented. Any questions on that example? Okay, let's take a look at another one. 25x squared minus 16 divided by 5x minus 4. So outside, I'm going to have 5x minus 4. Inside, I'm going to have 25x squared plus 0x minus 16, because I had a missing power of x. Oh, people might ask, do I need to write plus 0x or minus 0x? It doesn't matter, because it's just 0. So plus or minus 0 is still 0. So I always just write plus. OK. We doing OK? You keep it up? All right. All righty, leading term inside divided by leading term outside. 25x squared divided by 5x is going to be 5x. We're going to take the 5x times the divisor, 5x minus 4, and we get 25x squared minus 20x. 25x squared minus 20x. We're going to draw a line and subtract that quantity from what's up above. Distributing the subtraction sign, we change it to the addition of the opposite. We get 0x squared. 0x plus 20x is 20x. Bring down the next term, minus 16. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside. 20x squared divided by 5x is going to be 4x. So we've got. Oh, wait a second here. Hang on. Oh, it wouldn't be 4x. What did I do? Oh, I wrote this incorrectly, didn't I? Yeah. Because <laughs> I thought, how could it be 5x plus 4x? That doesn't work. 20x divided by 5x is 4. Let's go back and just get rid of that. 20x divided by 5x is 4. Haste makes waste. Slow down. OK. Now, talking to myself there. Four times, I talk to myself a lot. I just don't know it because you know I can hardly see any of you. For all I know, there's only one person there, and the rest of you have all gone to Australia, whatever. OK, 5x minus 4. So 4 times 5x is 20x. 4 times minus 4 is minus 16. 20x minus 16. Subtract that quantity from what's up above. Change it to addition of the opposite. Zero, zero, zero remainder. OK. 
So I've given you everything there is in this section a little bit at a time. And now we're going to go back and just look at examples, kind of mix it up. We looked at fractions, a single fraction where we reduced it. We looked at a polynomial divided by a monomial where we separated it into several different fractions and then reduced each one. We looked at a polynomial divided by a polynomial. We needed to make sure everything was in standard form and there were no missing powers. So here we go with some more examples. And let's take, let's see, let's take this one. It says divide y squared plus 13y plus 13 by y plus 1. So outside we have y plus 1. Inside we have y squared plus 13y plus 13. Both the dividend and the divisor, the inside and the outside, are both in standard form. There's no missing terms. So we're good to go. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside. Y squared divided by Y equals Y. And we'll put that right up there. Okay. So then we've got Y times Y plus one, which is Y squared plus Y, Y squared plus Y. We're going to subtract that quantity from what's up above. We'll change it to addition of the opposite. And we'll add up the columns. Y squared plus negative Y squared is zero. 13Y plus negative Y would be positive 12Y. Bring down the next term, plus 13. We're going to take the leading term inside divided by the leading term outside. 12Y divided by Y is 12. So it's plus 12. Then we're going to take 12 times the divisor, which is 12y plus 12, 12y plus 12. Subtract that quantity from what's up above. Change it to addition of the opposite. 12y plus negative 12y is 0. 13 plus negative 12 is 1. So we get y plus 12 plus 1 over the divisor, so 1 over the quantity y plus 1. Any questions there? OK. We good to go on to another example? I had a question about a specific one on part 1 of 5.8. OK. It was number 11. Can you just tell me what it is? Uh, yeah, it's negative 18 x squared y cubed plus 12 x y squared minus 6 x y divided by negative 6 x squared y squared. So have I got that correct? Yes. OK, all right. And that fits right in with what I was going to do with next anyway. So we've got a polynomial divided by a monomial. So we take each term in the numerator and divide it by the term in the denominator. Notice the denominator is negative 6x squared, y squared, all the way across. OK, so far? Yes. Now we're going to reduce it term by term. Negative 18 divided by negative 6 would be 3 over 1. x squared divided by x squared would be x to the 0 power, or just 1. So times 1 times 1. y cubed over y would be y squared. So I'm left with 3y squared over 1, which is just 3y squared. So far, so good? Yes. OK. Now, this next term, I've got plus, and then, but I've got a positive on top and a negative on the bottom. So that's going to make 
a minus. You okay with that? Yeah. And then 12 over six is two over one. <coughs> Excuse me. You okay? Do I <laughs> Sorry. Dial 911? Okay, all right. Um, I think you did part of it wrong. Did I? The very first um, equation. Oh. You put negative six X squared, but you just put Y, you didn't put squared. I see that. Thank you, Jamie. I'm glad somebody's <laughs> late. So that would make this. Uh, yeah, so I copied it wrong. When I transferred yeah. this down here, I didn't put. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you said something now. What's really frustrating, if I do a problem that's like 15 minutes long and at the very end, somebody says, oh, you know, you left off a sign way back there. I'm like, ah, thank you. Okay, we good to keep going, everybody? Yeah. All right. So let's see, where was I? I've got 12 over six is two over one. X over X squared is X to the negative one on top, right? Which would be X to the positive one on the bottom. So x over x squared becomes one over x. So far so good? Yeah. And then y squared over y squared is one over one. So what have I got? I've got minus two over x, okay? Yeah. Moving on, next term. Okay, so I'm subtracting which would be like adding a negative, the two negatives are gonna reduce down to one over one, okay? So it's gonna be plus, you okay where I got the plus sign? Yeah. Okay, and then let's see, y over y squared, excuse me, x over x squared would be x to the negative one on top, which is x to the positive one on the bottom. y over y squared would be one over, well, it'd be what? Y to the negative one on top, which is Y to the one on the bottom. So what do I end up with? I end up with plus one over X, Y. And there's my final Jeopardy answer. Okay, thank you. I see where I went wrong now. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's do this one. 3x plus 2 divided into 2 plus 7x plus 6x cubed plus 10x squared. Okay. Is there anything I need to do before we proceed? Do I need to fix anything? What do I need to fix? The descending powers. Right, descending powers. So it should be 3x plus 2 divided into 6x cubed plus 10x squared plus 7x plus 2. And there's no missing powers, right? So we're good to go. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside, 6x cubed divided by 3x, which is 2x squared. Okay, 6 over 3 is 2, x cubed over x is x squared. Then I'm going to take that 2x squared times the divisor, the 3x plus 2, which gives us 6x cubed plus 4x squared, which I write up here. 6x cubed plus 4x squared. Subtract that quantity from what's up above. Distribute the subtraction sign, change it to addition of the opposite. 6x cubed plus negative 6x cubed is 0x cubed. 10x squared plus negative 4x squared is 6x squared. Bring down the next term, plus 7x. Take the leading term inside divided by the leading term outside and we get 6x squared divided by 3x, which is 2x. So plus 2x. 
take the 2x times the divisor, the 3x plus 2, and we get 6x squared plus 4x. 6x squared plus 4x. Subtract that quantity from what's up above. Change it to addition of the opposite. 6x squared plus negative 6x squared is 0. 7x plus negative 4x is 3x plus 2. Okay, take the leading term inside divided by the leading term outside. 3x divided by 3x is 1, so plus 1. 1 times 3x plus 2 is going to be 3x plus 2. 3x plus 2. Subtract that quantity from what's up above, change it to addition of the opposite, and we get 0 remainder, so our answer is 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. This whole process of just focusing on the leading term, I know it bothers people. It's like, why, you know, why aren't we considering the whole thing? And so I have an example. We'll see if, if any of you can relate to this. How many of you have ever made biscuits from scratch? Okay, so you get all the dough and you roll it up into a big mound. And anybody, everybody done that? Okay, so what do you do? You roll out the dough. So you've got this, you've got this pile of dough here, right? And you roll it out flat, and then you cut up, you cut out as many biscuits. You have like this, this little biscuit cutter thing that's round, and you cut out as many biscuits as you can. So you get an exact number of, of whole biscuits. And then what do you do? You take all the dough that's left and you mold it into a ball and you start over. And then you cut out all the biscuits that you can, and you keep doing that. So you get down to the very end and rarely does it come out exact to where you can make one perfect biscuit. Sometimes it's close. Sometimes there's a little bit, so you just eat it or whatever. But that's kind of what we're doing here in that we're trying to match this leading number. So we're trying to cut out a number of biscuits and then all this other stuff, we keep shoving it down to the very end. And if there's some left over, it's remainder. If it comes out exact, well, then we've got a certain number of biscuits. But it's like we cut out exact things, take what's left, and keep shoving it down the line. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, especially if you've never made biscuits. But if you haven't, it's time you learned. OK, moving on. How about this one? 24 in to the 12th power divided by eight into the fourth. Now everybody's getting hungry, all this talk of biscuits, huh? You know what, I'm gonna rewrite that. That wasn't very legible. 24 into the 12th over eight in to the fourth. So 24 over eight reduces to three over one. N to the 12th over N to the fourth is N to the 12 minus four, which is N to the eighth power over one, so it's just three into the eight. And again, I can go straight there. So you've got a poly, you've got a, a monomial over a monomial, a single fraction, reduce it, make sure if there's any negative exponents, you move it across the line, okay? All right, uh, let's see here, how about, this one. x squared plus 10x plus 30 divided by x plus 6. So outside we're going to have x plus 6, inside x squared plus 10x plus 30. The inside is already in descending powers, and there's no missing terms. Easy peasy, hopefully. All right. So here we go. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside. x squared over x, which is x, which goes there. There really isn't anything new in this process. It's just that there's a whole bunch of process. 
So then we're going to take x times x plus 6, which is x squared plus 6x, which goes here. Then we're going to subtract that quantity from what's up above. Change it to addition of the opposite. x squared plus negative x squared is 0. 10x plus negative 6x is 4x. 4x plus 30 bringing down the next term, starting all over, leading term inside divided by leading term outside. 4x divided by x is a plus four. Four times the divisor, four times x plus six, four x plus 24. Write it up there. Subtract that quantity from what's up above. Pause briefly while you catch up with mail. Change subtraction to addition of the opposite. 4x plus negative 4x is 0. 30 plus negative 24 is 6. So x plus 4 plus 6 over x plus 6. OK. Hmm, let's see here. Ah, here comes a fun one. Fun for whom, would you say? Okay. A cubed plus A divided by A plus 3. So outside is A plus 3. Inside is A cubed plus zero a squared plus a plus zero constant. So there were two missing terms in this one, okay? We haven't done this before. We've only done it with one missing term, but I got to fill in all the missing powers. I had the cube, I didn't have the square, I had the first degree, I didn't have the constant, okay? So here we go. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside. A cubed divided by A is A squared, which goes up here above the A squared column. A squared times the divisor, A plus 3 gives us A cubed plus 3A squared. A cubed plus 3A squared. Subtract that from what's up above. Change it to addition of the opposite. A cubed plus negative A cubed is zero. Zero A, a squared plus negative three A squared is negative three A squared. Bring down the next term, plus A. and start the process over. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside. Negative 3a squared divided by a would be negative 3a. So minus 3a goes there. Negative 3a times a plus 3 is negative 3a squared minus 9a. Negative 3a squared minus 9a. Subtract that quantity from up above. Change it to addition of the opposite. And we get, let's see, negative 3a squared plus 3a squared is 0. a plus 9a is 10a plus 0. OK. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside. 10a divided by a is 10. So that's plus 10. 10 times a plus 3 is 10a plus 30. 10a plus 30. Subtract that quantity from what's up above. Change it to addition of the opposite, 10a plus negative 10a is 0. 0 plus negative 30 is negative 30. So there's our remainder. So a squared minus 3a plus 10 plus negative 30 
over a plus 3. All righty. You okay with that one? Any questions there? Okay, let's see here. Ah, let's do one more example. This is a lookalikes. The author likes to do that. So part A says 16A squared, X squared, excuse me, 16X squared minus 16X minus five divided by four X. And part B is 16X squared minus 16X minus five divided by four X plus one. So in both cases, the numerator is 16X squared minus 16X minus five. But part A, we're dividing by a monomial. So you're gonna take each term in the numerator and divide it by the denominator. 16 over four is four over one, x squared over x is x, so we get four x minus, 16 over four is four over one, x over x reduces down to one, so minus four, and then we can't do anything with the last term. So there's our answer for the first part, okay? Polynomial divided by monomial, split it up into separate fractions. Okay. Part B, a polynomial divided by a polynomial, we use this long division format. Leading term divided by leading term, 16x squared divided by 4x is 4x. 4x times the divisor is 16x squared minus 4x. Subtract that quantity from what's up above, change it to addition of the opposite. 16x squared plus negative 16x squared is zero. Negative 16x plus 4x is negative 12x minus five. Leading term inside divided by leading term outside. Negative 12x divided by 4x is negative three or minus three. Negative three times 4x plus one, negative 12x minus three, negative 12x minus three. Subtract that quantity from what's up above, change it to addition of the opposite, negative 12x plus 12x is zero, negative five plus three is negative two. So we get 4x minus three plus negative two over 4x plus one. Now, obviously we're gonna get different answers, but the other point of this problem is that we're going to be doing it, hang on here. Did I? Oh dear, oh dear. Apparently I've made a mistake, so hang on, hang on, let's see. 16x minus five, that would be Oh, I see what I did wrong. I see what I did wrong. Somewhere in the line of duty, I messed up the sign. That's not a good thing to do. So we're going to go back here. Let's see what I can do to correct this. It's not a good thing to leave, leave your students with a wrong answer for the very last problem. Okay. 16x squared divided by 4x is 4x, okay? 4x times 4x plus 1 is 16x squared plus 4x. 16x squared plus 4x, okay? Subtract so that. What I did was somehow had the wrong sign there. So this should have been negative 20x minus five. So I messed up my sign. I don't know, I've erased the evidence. So, okay. Then you take negative 20x divided by four x, which is minus five, minus five times four x plus one is negative 20x minus five. 
subtract that from what's up above, change it to addition of the opposite. So that one was supposed to have no remainder. So I, in my haste and sloppiness, made a mistake. Shame on me. Okay. All right. Anyway, so tomorrow I'll be back at 10.05 for an office hour. If anybody has questions then, Otherwise, I'll be back at 11 o'clock and from 11 till, when, till whenever. Uh, if you have questions getting ready for your test or from the review or whatever, come in and ask them. And then tomorrow at some point, you fin take your test before 11.59. And then we'll be back on Wednesday, starting with, I believe it is chapter eight. Okay, well, that's it for today. Any questions before we go?